this is Louis from What's AI, and here's the first of a three-part interview with Or Gorodisky. Or has been in the generative AI industry for over six years and is now the VP of Research and Development at DID. The goal of this interview is to demystify the research in the industry, more specifically in generative AI or large language models and image generation. This episode will be about his background and what he thinks of academics and graduate studies. Then, the second episode will dive on the job itself and the job application process, so how to get there. Finally, the last episode will be about the startup world in generative AI. I hope you enjoy this interview. What's your academic background and how did you get to the role you are here now? Hey, so my background is in computer engineering. Uh, the degree that I did for a bachelor is electrical engineering. I did it in Israel. I uh, actually started this uh, uh, degree while I was still in the army. And uh, I am doing my master's in Tel Aviv University, which is also in uh, electrical engineering. And I'm majoring in AI and computer vision. So you are doing your master's or you did your master's? So it's divided into two parts. Uh, the courses parts is finished and the research part, which is the thesis, is uh, still something that I'm working on. And you are working on this as part of your current job or just it's another thing completely? Yeah, it's something that's uh, going on in parallel. So uh, not part of the, the position, but uh, kind of interfering with the, the current position that uh, I have. Well, so you've been from, if I understand correctly, you've worked in the field in between the, the degree and the master's and then you, you decided to start a master? Um, yes, th there was almost no gap, uh, but I started my bachelor and uh, my uh, master's um, very low key. It's a program in Tel Aviv University that allows uh, professionals to do a master degree like to spread out. Okay. And then uh, once you're ready to commit and finish the, the research part, you can uh, finish the degree. And why did you decide to, to make this master in a low-key format rather than going full-time and finishing as early as possible? I think... Uh, that once you're in a position in the industry where you feel that you learn more during your professional uh, side, uh, it's hard to give it up. And uh, there is, it's something that you can al always stop or reduce the amount of uh, time that you spend in your profession and finish the degree. So it's, it's a flexibility that I liked. And I always felt like the, the things that I learn where I work are more valuable. I, I guess that the, 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 the companies that I worked in, I, I learned more than just uh, in the university. Then why did you decide to continue or even finish your master's degree? Is there any value to it? Mm, th there's always value in having a, some kind of a paper saying that you are a, a graduate of a, of a program and Tel Aviv University is also a, a very leading, is, is a leading university in Israel and also in the field of uh, computer science and computer vision. So it's, it's something that's uh, good to have to open doors. Uh, but, uh, and, and I like having this connection to the academic world because especially in this field of uh, generative AI and computer vision, there are two leading forces. One of them is the industry and, and the second one is the academy. So I like having uh, one foot in, in each of them. So it, yeah, it was to not close any doors, to, to stay open to opportunities. Yes. And would you recommend people doing a master's as well? Or like in what case should they do or do not do a master's degree? Uh, 
In my background, as you mentioned, uh, I started as uh, in a position that which is more uh, hardware oriented and uh, more computer science oriented. And I wanted to make a transition into the computer vision uh, in industry. So having this kind of academic studies helped me get the, the first foot and uh, into this field. And then once I had the, the background, I could uh, do a professional transition as well, which got me to where I am at the moment, which is uh, one of the leading uh, generative AI company startups in Israel and also very well known brand in generative AI in general in the world. If you want to, to keep the opportunities open for both the industry and academia, would you consider doing a PhD? Uh, at the moment, I think, especially because it's, uh, I'm a bit prolonging my uh, graduation, I feel like uh, pursuing a PhD would, is, is much more demanding and would require taking a break from uh, the industry, which I think at the moment is, is a mistake. I think in the field that, we're, uh, that uh, we are, it's uh, much more interesting, much more challenging to take these kind of technologies and productize them and deliver them at scale than uh, researching, which is which I feel would be uh, a bit more narrowed and a bit more uh, in depth, but uh, with less impact on uh, uh, people and uh, the, the business. So you would, you would think that applying the models being created by the larger companies or open source efforts is more valuable than trying to create better models. What is the, the main reasons behind that? Like the driving forces of this uh, field, um, as we see again and again, comes from not from the academia, but from companies because it's very resource demanding because the business opportunities are so big because the, the business world uh, focus is on these kind of technologies. So it's it's just uh, at the moment I feel I am at uh, the place where things happen. But uh, it might change and as I said before, I, I like having both options and uh, I still uh, go to university uh, sessions and uh, courses. So uh, it's just another way to learn. Hey guys, I'm quickly interrupting this video for two special announcements. First, I want to share a very cool AI newsletter that I'm helping with that will give you all the essential daily AI news and tweets you should know. It's completely free and a great way to stay up to date with the field. The second news is that you can now buy What's AI merch if you want it. I have some cool t-shirts, sweatshirts, and even a jacket that you can see in this video. I hope you like the different designs and feel free to buy it to support the channel or not buy it, it's completely fine. Just leaving a like and commenting is all I need. But when your masters will be done, will you keep a feet in the academic world or you will go all in with mm -hmm. the ID and, and, and the industry? So also uh, as part of my uh, work in the ID, we keep a, a very high uh, um, connection to the, the academic world. I am in content contact with people that are researching what we do uh, in the ID. So I get also the connection from work like uh, it's not the, the the only way to get a connection to the academia uh, by actually pursuing a degree so uh, uh, unless i i feel i want to go into in-depth research i think uh, it's going to be my last uh, academic degree uh, my mother would be sad to hear that but uh, that's the truth would she be sad because it's like a more risky play to, to go into the industry or just because she or other people uh, value more academic degrees, do you think? Uh, without being too prejudiced, 
I think uh, Jewish mothers uh, like uh, uh, doctors, uh, but uh, I think it's it's more risky to pursue a PhD. Uh, in the industry, there is a lot of comfort. Uh, PhD is uh, maybe a different kind of comfort, but uh, uh, I think less stability, at least in my viewpoint. Yeah, why would you say that it's, it's more risky? For example, if I want to give a bit more context, it's I, I am doing a PhD. I, yeah. to, to me, um, a PhD is a lot safer than the industry, especially if you sell it, if you choose a startup, just yeah. because I have a sh secured funding and I am just doing my own research. Of course, it can lead nowhere if I don't find anything interesting or it doesn't succeed, but still I'm, I'm getting paid a little <laughs> while yeah. do, doing that. And in the end, I, I should get a degree, I assume. <laughs> so it's <laughs> relatively safe compared to a, a startup where everything could fail and you could just lose your job. So like, yeah, what's your, what's your opinion on that? Uh, as you said, it's it's no one gets rich from uh, doing a, a PhD. Yeah. And so it depends on, I guess, uh, your lifestyle and what you want to achieve and how expensive is the city that you live in. Uh, but uh, there are risks in uh, being on PhD salary for long periods yeah. of time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but. But also, I think what's more interesting to me is that uh, being in the industry keeps you connected to what's uh, real, really going on. So it's important to have touch with both worlds, to know what's being researched, but also to know what's being used in the industry. Uh, because uh, researchers can research uh, everything. So you want to research things that are applicable, at least in my viewpoint, you want to research things that are applicable, that are of interest in the business, because this means they are viable and sustainable and uh, would have value also when uh, you finish your degree and you want to start your professional life. And what if the PhD research is actually applicable? Uh, it is applicable, but from my viewpoint and uh, from my experience in uh, DAD, many of the, the big challenges require a team and required uh, cross-functional uh, uh, people and uh, skills. So if you want to build something, it's more like I, I love paper. I read papers uh, almost every week, every day but they are a proof of concept, they are uh, ideas, and to build something out of a paper, you need a team, you need people with different skills, and to get to this scale, it's hard to do in the, the academy. Maybe you have your lab and your lab uh, partners, but research is uh, pretty individual, and uh, in the industry, research is more collaborative. Uh, so this is something that uh, also sets the, the, the research apart and the, the, usually it, uh, it shows in the outcome of the research. The outcome is not a paper and not, not a POC, it's something that's been used by uh, uh, possibly millions of people. Would you say that's uh, one of the main differences between research in academia versus research in the industry? Collaborativeness. It, it comes, it derives from the motivation of research in the academy and in the industry. And uh, I guess yeah, it's one of the main differences that interests me the most. I like managing people. I like tackling uh, what are uh, like hard challenges that require not just one person, a uh, very dedicated person that, that can research it by himself, but uh, a team of uh, different individuals that uh, contribute to this uh, big, big uh, challenge. Yeah, that definitely makes sense. It's 
it's for sure different and since you m most people think and even i am part of those people but we think that to become a research scientist in the industry you kind of must go through the academic research process like you at least have to have a master's degree where we see it's not the case in, in your case oh you should you should you should you, there are exceptions but uh you should have a master degree like and this it, this is the easiest way the easiest way to to get into this field 